So we'll look at binomial theorem now, and it's a very important concept in terms of you know not only the problems you might get in entrance examinations and you know board examinations, but also in terms of the application it will have in other subjects and other areas which are actually a, in, uh, you know indirect or direct applications of math that you're going to study, and especially in physics you know, and you know other such places you will have uh, the binomial theorem somehow used in one of the steps in many derivations and you know it's one of those things that help you simplify your understanding of almost anything so it's a very common uh, task to have to expand x plus y raised to n in some way because this expression itself you know gives us nothing at all so we need to find a way to work with it and binomial theorem is the place to start so we'll begin uh, with uh, this expression this is the basic expression for binomial theorem it says that x plus y raised to n can be written in this form c n c naught x raised to n y raised to 0 plus n c 1 x raised to n minus 1 into y raised to 0 and so on till n c n x raised to 0 y raised to n so you to there are two you know there are actually are some a couple of major things you can notice and there are other things also which we will look at later one is that x the powers of you know the exponent of x decreases from n to 0 and the exponent of y goes from 0 to n so that means if something is varying from 0 to n or from n to 0 there is there have to be n plus 1 terms and hence this very easy and you know trivial result that in the expansion there are the total number of terms is n plus 1 and uh, so basically ncr is a combinatorial term actually it's a, it, it's the number of ways in which you can select r things out of n in any possible combination the order here is not important and that is how it is different from permutations which you would have either read about or will read after this so uh, basically it's very uh, counterintuitive to many people how uh, an expression of the form x plus y raised to n can be you know given uh, can be written as a sum of all these terms but if you think about it, if you multiply, let's say, if you multiply x plus y into x plus y into x plus y, let's say four times. So you'll notice a pattern in which those terms are appearing. Let's say when you multiply x plus y, when you, you know, actually write down x plus y raised to four, which is not a huge task to write. You will notice that the term x into y cube, for example, there are certain ways in which, you know, it can appear. And those number of ways depend on how the exponents combine. So it's like, you know, filling balls in boxes which is a common analogy people make when they talk of combinatorics and other such areas of math. So that pattern, you know, if we go on you know, looking into that, we would realize that uh, it's nothing but the number of ways in which the exponents can combine. And that is why you have these terms, nc0 and nc1. They are basically the number, number of ways in which those exponents can combine to give you this final answer. So. More about that uh, will be there in whatever material you refer to as your reference for you know these uh, courses. And uh, so here we are actually more concerned about you know dealing with using this. How do you how do we use this and what what can we use this for and all those things. So yeah, NCR again can be expressed in multiple ways. This is a common notation you will find in older books and you know people who have a fascination with beautiful math and with handwritten math tend to use it still today and cr is a standard expression that you will see almost everywhere because n there is obviously understood so we, since we have discussed that there are you know n plus one terms in the expansion there is this obvious uh, question about whether there will be a middle term so and the answer here is if there are n even and n is even you know if and the exponent of x plus y is even then obviously n plus 1 is going to be odd and so we will have a middle term in fact which will be the n plus 2 by 2 a term and if n is odd then we would not have a middle term because n plus 1 would be even so we would have two middle terms which will obviously be n plus 1 by 2 a term and n plus 3 by 2 a term in fact and uh, you can notice that this is a very nice way of writing it people often represent it as n plus 1 by 2 plus 1 a term so it doesn't make sense to you know write it like that and uh, proceeding along similar lines if you try to generalize this expression to you know x1 and you take x1 to xk and then put an exponent of n uh, we can put forward similar 
combinatorial arguments to show that it can be written as the summation of n factorial by r1 factorial r2 factorial to rk factorial into x1 raised to r1 into x2 raised to r2 and so on and in fact here only if you substitute for k is equal to 2 you would arrive at the binomial theorem because that is just a specific case of the multinomial theorem more about multinomial theorem will be discussed later for now we will move on to the properties of the binomial coefficients which can be which are usually as i said represented as c0 plus c1 plus c2 okay. so yeah so this c0 plus c1 plus c2 up to cn is right. equal to 2 raised to n okay this we can prove by just putting x is equal to y is equal to 1 right. that general general equation hmm. so that general equation is this right we got if we put x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 right we ultimately get this right rhs as lhs of this equation exactly so you can see that if x is equal to 1 and y equal to 1 your lhs will be 2 and the exponent there is n so it will be 2 raised to n and on the right side all x's and all y's will be 1 so you will simply get the sum of coefficients uh, right yes and this sec second property is c0 minus c1 plus c2 up to minus 1 whole raised to n into cn right this is equal to 0 we okay. can prove prove it just by putting x is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 1 in that general right equation. okay because obviously uh, 0 raised to n is 0 here and uh, that is why we would get the this expression uh, to be equal to 0 yes. and the direct implication of this uh, expression is the fact that you know the sum of all even coefficients is equal to the sum of odd coefficients yes, yes, yes. right so so the third property is c0 plus c2 plus c4 mm -hmm. we can get it by adding in the first and second equation right second property exactly so, so the odd terms will cancel out yes exactly exactly so 2 into this if we add this two and we will get 2 into c0 plus c2 right. plus c4 so 2 goes there and that's yes, why the power yes. becomes n minus yes. 1 yes. right and uh, similarly you can put forward an argument for the e odd terms we can instead of just adding we can subtract yes, exactly. and so again there will be an extra 2 there and that is why the right hand side will be 2 raised to n minus 1 uh -huh. and okay and in this case we will have to just minus the first question first equation mm -hmm. minus second equation right So we'll ultimately get two times c1 plus c3 plus c5. Right. Odd terms is equal to two raised to n, uh -huh. which ultimately get gets is equal to two raised to n minus one. Right. So next property is Pascal's theorem. Okay. So if we want this proof of this property, mm -hmm. let's say we are selecting a team. Okay. From n plus one players. Right. Okay, so n plus one players, and from the point of view of selector, mm -hmm. the total cases are n plus one c r. Right. Means we are selecting r players from total n n plus one players. Okay. And if we think another way, uh -huh. like one player is excluded or included. Okay. If it he is included, uh -huh. then we'll have to select uh, uh, one. Less than the uh, yes. right. R minus one people from n n uh, players. Okay. Right. So total cases are n c r minus one. Correct. And second case is if he is excluded. Right. Then we'll have to select the team from rest of the people. Right. So the total number of cases are n c r. Right. So ultimately total cases of selection of team is. going to be equal right because it is the same selection that we are talking about so two we have here two ways of looking at it and that is why we have this equality yes. so this is this term and this term are ultimately on going to be equal right this so okay so you just looked at a very nice and intuitive and practical uh, way to prove pascal's theorem so that was pretty interesting and uh, in fact a lot of things in binomial theorem that you will come across are pretty interesting and the fact that you know it's uh, it's it relates algebra and you know just polynomials something look which looks like polynomials to something like combinatorics yes. 
it's pretty amazing because you know permutations and combinations and such topics are pretty interesting to most people and the fact that there exists a relation here is amazing yes next equation uh, next property is c not square plus c1 square plus c2 square up to cn square is equal to 2n cn right this we can get by multiplying two binomial equations mm -hmm. general term right Let's put y is equal to 1 here okay and x plus 1 whole raised to n into x plus 1 whole raised to n okay just reverse the this rhs mm -hmm. uh, like just write n cn as at first first term okay and this is at second uh, last term right so we will get ultimately this lhs of this property okay which is uh, going to be equal to 2 n c n hmm. so some useful s series are we like we know the su summation of gp 1 plus x plus x square up to infinity okay finite terms is equals to uh, 1 by 1 minus x right and there is a condition if mod of x has to be great, uh, less than 1. No? Right, so we've already covered this in geometric progressions yes. and uh, that mod of x is less than 1 because the limit that as x tends to infinity only exists if that uh, condition is satisfied. Okay, this is a very important property of bi binomial theorem. Okay. If x plus 1 whole raised to 1, right. this can be written as nk plus 1. Okay. Means this is this is uh, k is any any integer okay like x plus 1 whole raised to n uh -huh. minus 1 is is multiple of n okay this is very important property uh -huh. and we you mu you must note this okay and second is x minus 1 whole raised to n is equal to m k dash plus 1 uh -huh. if m is even right and m k dash minus 1 if m is odd okay and this property if we need proof we can just get by uh, expanding this binomial binomially okay so basically what we just said was that x plus 1 raised to n can be written as nk plus 1 where k is an integer and n is yes. the same exponent so we are talking about values here so what for every value of x no matter what value we take this expression will still hold true uh, no it is ultimately true if we uh, see the proof like okay. x plus 1 whole raised to n mm -hmm. uh, will give us n c naught x mm -hmm. x raised to n right plus n c one x raised to two okay up to n c n x raised to zero right these n terms mm -hmm. are all multiple of n okay and this is not this is ultimately is equal to n so right we can uh, we can just get uh, n common from this right so that's why the, you'll have n common from everything else so that's why we can write this as nk plus one yes. so again i'll reiterate the fact that no matter what value of x is there this property will always hold true that's why it's called a property in fact x plus one raised to n will always result in an express in you know in the value which is of the form nk plus one now no matter that's what exactly. you substitute in front of x okay and similarly we have another property for x minus 1 raised to n which can be proved by putting forward a similar argument it says mk dash plus 1 when if m is even or if m is odd this uh, odd and even obviously exists because it is minus 1 whose uh, exponents whose value depends on what exponents there are and specifically it depends on whether the exponents are even or odd so if you look at that you will automatically come to this property